Welcome to a Faithful God podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today on the show, we're going to wrap up our three-part series called Unshackled Faith as we dive in deep to those unrealistic expectations surrounding prayer. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Well, hi, friend. Welcome back to the show. I am so excited to have you here. So listen, if you are just t- tuning into the show for the first time and you haven't caught or didn't catch, I should say, the last two episodes in this three-part series, I highly recommend going ahead and hitting pause and going back and listening to both of those because we're going to continue our series called Unshackled Faith as we really dive into the expectations surrounding our faith walk. In part one, we talked about just those very things, the unrealistic expectations surrounding so many things when it comes to our faith walk. In part two, we dug into the stories of Rahab, Tamar, and Mary Magdalene, as we just saw that these women did not, they weren't perfect, they didn't walk out their faith perfectly, and their circumstances weren't perfect, and still God used them. Still, they were an important part of God's uh, God's plan, right? And and in Jesus' ministries. And so today what we're going to do, I had told you back in episode one that today we were going to dedicate an entire episode to prayer and all of the expectations, the unrealistic expectations surrounding prayer. So today that's what we're going to do. Now, if you were able to listen to part one and part two, you know that I had a download, a free download for you, but you probably noticed that today's episode was not included in this download. And that's because I have an an entirely uh, separate free download for you. It's called Fearless Prayer, and I'm going to give you all the details at the end of this, um, at the end of, or I'll tell you how you can get it, excuse me, at the end of this episode. But it's called Fearless Prayer, and I want to talk to you about where this idea or what this is even about and where this stems from. So a while back, I actually sent out an email and also posted in the Facebook group. I actually sent out an email and I said, listen, hit reply and tell me your biggest struggle when it comes to prayer. And my friend, in all the years that I have had this online ministry, when I would ask questions and all the years combined, quite frankly, when I would ask questions, um, out of, out of all the questions that I received, like, uh, like tied together, I'm having a hard time saying this, but out of all those questions together, I did not get the response that I got with this particular question. So with this question, when I asked, what is your biggest struggle when it comes to prayer? Oh my goodness, my inbox was flooded with answers. I had all kinds of answers um, or people replying on social media and Facebook. And just so much so, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible, but so much so, there were so many that I actually opened up a spreadsheet. I'm a geek like that. I opened up a spreadsheet and I started just copying and pasting all of them in there. And then what I did is I spent some time in prayer and then I started pouring over those responses. And it was just, it was unbelievable. And what I found is that whether, I guess not, not whether, but even though we all come from different walks of life, even though we come from different parts of the world, even though we all have different circumstances, our struggles surrounding prayer were about the same. I had about a dozen, they all boiled down to about, out of all those responses, they all boiled down to about a dozen um, unrealistic expectations, which is, and, and I didn't realize it was expectations right in the beginning. I sat down and I was just studying them and pouring over them. And I started to see that, um, just that common theme of expectations. Like, where are these expectations coming from? And there were, like I said, there were so many that honest to goodness, as I was replying in uh, my, to my inbox, as I was replying to each and every person that sent me a response, no sooner would I send one reply and I'd get two more replies right at, you know, right after. It was just, it was unbelievable. And, and so what I started seeing, like I said, I started seeing this pattern. I started seeing this pattern of unrealistic expectations. 
And I started to formulate a plan of how I can come alongside you and serve you, how I can help you let go of these unrealistic expectations um, using God's truth about that, about each subject, and then really walking beside you. And that's why or how Fearless Prayer was born. So I've spent the last few months writing, testing, um, getting this out into the world. I had just a great group of volunteers, which was incredible. And shout out to all of you volunteers who showed up and did this. I so appreciate you. But I was testing it. And um, and like I said, getting feedback and going back and making edits and just getting this together so that I made sure that I can walk beside you, that I can really grab you by the hand and walk you through these, these expectations and how to help you in prayer. And you know, here's the thing. I don't know that, I think most of us, in fact, I have not come across a person yet. I know someone's out there. I know there are people out there who have taken classes on prayer. I suspect I never did. And every single community member that I've personally spoken to, either via email, in our group, we did a group um, kind of Zoom meeting to talk about fearless prayer um, on social media. I've never met anyone yet that has actually, that was actually, excuse me, taught how to pray. And so what I needed to do was really, really nail down some of these, these, um, these expectations and these thoughts and just these common struggles surrounding prayer so that I could help you walk through it. Now, here's the thing. You, like I said, there were, there were about a dozen or so of these responses that I received. But what I found is that, you, you know, you've heard, you've heard that saying, you've got to walk before you learn how to run, right? And so what I'm doing in fearless prayer is teaching you how to walk. Yes, we will get to some of those other issues like praying over scriptures, how to pray for others, how to pray for others without it taking up hours of your day. Um, you know, what does it mean to pray the way the Lord calls us to pray? Um, you know, all these other things surrounding prayer. What we had to learn how to do first is walk, right? We have to walk before we can learn how to run. And so fearless prayer is teaching you how to do that. I'm going to take you by the hand and we're going to walk through these unrealistic expectations and how to combat them. So that way then we can learn how to run. Now I'm gonna take care of you as far as learning how to run, as far as learning how to dive deeper in prayer. But first we wanna learn how to walk. First we wanna address these common, uh, these common unrealistic expectations and how to overcome them. So let's go ahead and dig in with this. And again, don't forget, I will tell you at the end of this show how to get your hands on Fearless Prayer. So I want to start by telling you a story about one of my community members, the Grow Your Faith community members. And by the way, big shout out to my Grow Your Faith community. But there's there was someone I received. And by the way, what, what's so incredible, it's so incredible. It gets me weepy just thinking about it. But every single day, whether it's in a DM, an email, um, someone reaches out to me and in the Grow Your Faith community and tells me something that they have experienced, that they have seen the way they have seen God working in their life. And it's absolutely incredible. In fact, it's exactly why I do this is just to really help you walk closer to God, whether you're in the Grow Your Faith community, just the foot, not just, but the footprints of inspiration and, and a faithful God community. But that is, I mean, I love that. That is my mission is to help you understand, right? Help you really uncover God. God's word, help you stay in communication with God, and also help you learn how to apply it to your life. And that's what these freebies are for, these, these lessons are for and everything. But anyway, so one day I opened up my DMs to a message from one of my community members. Now this was several months back from the time of recording, and um, we had actually done an entire lesson on seeking God. Now I will tell you what I told the, the ladies uh, as, before we got started. I said, hey guys, you're not going to like what I'm about to like, like what we're going to to study this month. We're not you're not going to like it because it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to feel just not easy. It's not going to feel easy at all. And so it was all about seeking God, getting quiet and listening for God. And um, it proved to be a powerful lesson, a powerful month. But 
it didn't go, it come without its struggles and its challenges. So on one particular day, excuse me, one of the women reached out to me and um, she shared with me that here she was, she sat down because she was getting ready. She wanted to sit down and um, um, really seek God, right? Shut everything off, try to listen for God. She said she did this and she was planning to sit down for about 30 minutes. But what happened was she got distracted. She got distracted, but she chose, right? We had been talking and we talked a lot about this that month, that we have to be persistent and consistent. We have to be more persistent, right? If we want to pursue God, we have to be persistent if we want to seek God, right? So what she did is when she got distracted, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today, but when she got distracted, she, okay, she realized it, went back, stopped herself, went back, and sought God again, set her mind back on God and was listening for God again. And then what happened is she got distracted again. So she started to get a little frustrated. So she stopped, set her mind back on God and was, was intentionally trying to hear him. And it happened again. She got distracted again. How many times have you been distracted during your Bible study, during your prayers, during, right? So many things. Sometimes it feels like we have a hundred tabs open in our brain. And no matter what we do, we can't keep our focus. I talk with my hands too much, obviously, as you're, I'm hitting my microphone and everything. Sorry about that. But um, how many times do you get distracted, right? I do too, all the time. That's so common. That's so normal. It's not unusual at all. But what she did that third time is she, as frustrating as it was, she chose to stop set her mind back on God and listen for him. And you want to know what she found? In eight minutes, right? She had originally planned to sit there for 30 minutes, but in eight, eight minutes time, God gave her the answer to not one, but two very uh, big questions she had. Did you catch that, my friend? In eight minutes time. She was persistent. She, she gave up and, and it was a conversation we had because she, she felt frustrated that she didn't last for 30 minutes. And I don't know about you, but I've been there. Ah, oh, it didn't turn out the way I thought it should. Right? We've talked about this and these expectations, haven't we? Right? It, it didn't happen the way I think it should, the way I wanted it to. And she was very frustrated that 30 minutes or excuse me, that she couldn't last 30 minutes. But I said, whoa, 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 we need to take a step back here, my friend. We need to celebrate that. In eight minutes time, you chose persistence. And in eight minutes time, God gave her not one, but two answers to two really big concerns she had. That right there is powerful, my friend. She had the expectation of being in it for 30 minutes. And she lasted eight. But, or excuse me, it, it, she got frustrated with her distractions, but she stayed persistent. And what happened because she showed up? What do I say all the time? We can't sit on the sidelines and sit back here passively and expect a change to happen. We can't sit back here passively and expect a relationship with God to happen. There's work we have to do. We have to be persistent and consistent. And when she chose to be persistent and consistent in her pursuit of God, he showed up big. He showed her that he didn't need 30 minutes to answer those questions. All he needed was eight. He showed her that he did, that even with distractions, when she chooses to put her mind back on God, he's going to show up with two very big, powerful things. Well, he may show up with two, may show up with one, what, what have you. But you get my point. These unrealistic expectations, and by the way, we all have them. I have them. It's not uncommon. But we've got to let them go, right? We've been working through this. We've been working through these unrealistic expectations. And I'm going to help you work through them in fearless prayer as well. Again, at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can get, get your hands on fearless prayer. So I love that about her story. She was persistent. She, she had to humble herself and realize that her desires were actually, you know, for 30 minutes wasn't what, God didn't need 30 minutes to speak to her. 
So she let those go and, and we changed her focus, changed her perspective and she got to celebrate what it meant to stay persistent and consistent. She got to celebrate what it meant to let go of her timeline for God's timeline. Mm, powerful stuff, friend. It's one of my favorite, favorite stories in the Grow Your Faith community. There are tons of them, but it's one of my favorites, especially when we're talking about expectations, because I can't tell you in our group coaching calls, um, our live weekly Q and A's in the co-study sessions, that's what comes up again and again and again, these expectations that we have about following God. And we've got to let those go. We've got to surrender our desires for his desires. So as I told you, um, you know, I had so, so, so many um, uh, responses regarding that one question that I asked. What is your biggest struggle when it comes to prayer? And so when I open those up, I just kind of want to, um, I just kind of want to read a few of those to you because I bet you can say, oh, yes, yes, me, yes, me, right? So here, here are a couple of them. I'm just reading them right from my notes. So first of all, um, and by the way, these are taken directly from your responses, exactly directly, like directly from them. And keep in mind again, right now, what we're going to do is learn how to walk. We're going to learn how to walk, then we'll learn how to run, right? When it comes to prayer and getting specific in prayer and praying for others and how to do it in a way that doesn't take up, up hours of your day and all of that stuff. But here are some of the responses that I got. What words do I uh, use? I was never taught how to pray. I don't think I'm praying right. I, I feel unworthy. I know he knows my heart and there's no wrong way to have a conversation with him, but that feeling is there, right? There's that whole knowing it and feeling it thing. I know these things. I know I'm, I'm supposed to be able to stand before him confidently, but I don't feel wor worthy enough, right? I always feel like a failure when I pray. I start praying and I get distracted. The kids come in and gosh, every single time you sit down to spend time with God and then the dog wants to go out, right? Every time, every single time, it never fails, right? You guys know that by watching me live and over on Facebook and stuff, you see that every time I sit down, Delilah has to go outside. <laughs> It just never fails. And so, you know, all these distractions or this long to-do list that we have throughout the day. I don't know about you, but I can't even shut off my brain. Like I just, my brain is just going, 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 going all the time, right? And then the other thing is, is you know what? Well, I start to pray and I'll maybe do it for a couple of days and then I fall off the wagon, quote unquote, and then I don't pick it back up again. Can you say, or can you raise your hand, excuse me, to any of those, can you say, oh yeah, yeah, I've thought those things. That's how I feel. And that's what this is all about, friend. This is what I, this is why it's so important. The relationship with God is so important, right? All lasting trans, uh, transformation, excuse me, happens in the presence of God. Let me repeat that, my friend. All lasting transformation happens in the presence of God. And so we've got to, that's why I'm taking an entire episode to talk about prayer because it's so incredibly important. So when it comes to how to pray, first and foremost, friend, you've got to realize prayers don't have to be these eloquent, formal words. They don't have to be rehearsed or perfect. God just wants to have a relationship with you, right? He just wants to have a relationship with you. All you have to do is start talking. That's it. Sometimes just a whisp whispering up, hi, Jesus. Sometimes as you're driving about, you've, you guys have heard me say this over and over and over again as I'm driving around my love for trees. I'll see a tree and I'll say, oh, Jesus, thank you for that tree. It is so beautiful. Thank you that you created those so that in the midst of my busy, crazy, hectic day, I can stop for a moment and realize where those came from from you, right? They don't have to be perfect, my friends. They don't have to be eloquent. They don't have to be rehearsed. All you have to do is start talking. Here's the thing, my friend. God created you just as you are. He just wants you to have a, he just wants to have, or excuse me, he just wants you to invite him in. He, he created you just the way you are. You are perfectly and wonderfully made, my friend. 
All we have to do is show up perfectly imperfect, right? We have to show up with all of our, whatever it is, all the baggage, everything, and just start talking to God. You see, God isn't waiting for us to be whole. He's not waiting for, he's not saying, hey, you know what? You know what, friend? Wait until you have your life figured out. Wait until you get through this difficult time, then come to me and we'll have a relationship. Is that what God is saying? He just wants you to show up right now, just the way you are, and have a conversation with him. Right about now, you may be throwing a yeah but out at me, right? Those yeah buts that I like to talk about. You may be thinking, yeah, but Tammy, in Luke chapter 11, Jesus teaches us how to pray. So I feel like there's a certain way that I have to pray. And you know what, my friend, you're right. He does teach us that. But remember what we said at the beginning, or remember what I said at the beginning? We've got to learn how to walk before we can learn how to get specific with our prayers, right? And we're going to dive into that later on. We'll dive into the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray later on. But right now, we want to learn how to walk. We want to learn how to just start communicating with him. In fact, I love James chapter 1, verse 5, where it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. My friend, if you need wisdom, ask God. Whatever we're going through in life, we can always and should always, by the way, ask God. Not long ago, we did a um, series over on Facebook Live where, of growing closer to God, and we talked about surrendering to God, right? Surrendering our desires for His. And what we want to do with that is embrace godly wisdom, right? We build those spiritual reflexes by practicing, by being persistent and consistent in our pursuit of God. And what we want to do when it comes to prayer, we've got to be p- persistent and consistent. We've got to ask God for the godly wisdom to handle the day right? To handle what life throws at us. It's that whole if-then situation that we see all throughout the Bible. If you need wisdom, then ask. It's not hard. We make everything harder than it has to be, including prayer. If you need wisdom, ask God. That's it. Super simple. I know, I know. It's, it, it, I know. It feels vulnerable and it feels uncomfortable. Do it anyway, because you're never going to get through that uncomfortableness. You're never going to feel or or work through that vulnerability unless you start doing it. Do it anyway. He's not waiting for you to be perfect. He's not waiting for you to be whole. He's not waiting for you to figure out and and tie up this little mess that that you have going on right now into a big, beautiful bow, bow before you come to him. He wants you to come to him right now just as you are, as the, as the child that he created. He wants you to come just as you are, perfectly imperfect, and just show up and have a conversation with him. So when it comes to how to pray, let go of all the unrealistic expectations that you have surrounding it, surrounding uh, how to pray, and just show up. Just show up. Just whisper up a, hi, God. Whisper up a, Lord, I am struggling right now. I do not know what's going on. I don't, I don't know how to process this situation. Lord, pour out your wisdom on me and show me. Guide my steps. I don't need the entire picture. Boy, oh boy, is that a hard one to surrender. Am I right? But the truth is we don't, my friend. We don't need to know how it's all going to play out. All we need is that next step. So my prayer is often, Lord, I don't need to know the whole thing. I want to know the whole picture, but I know that I don't need it because you have the entire picture. You know exactly how this is going to play out, Lord. So I'm going to choose to trust you. Remember, trusting God isn't a feeling, it's a choice. So I'm going to choose to trust you, Lord. Just give me the next step. That's all I need. Second thing I want to talk about when it comes to unrealistic expectations is consistency. How many times have you started out and you've gone through a couple of days of praying, right? And you think, oh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, but then life gets in the way. And you think, oh, that quiet time with God, right? I I get up in the morning, every morning at six o'clock, but um, 
trying to give you a good scenario. I get up every morning at six o'clock and I sit down in my quiet room, right? Sit down in my quiet room and I pray. But, but then something happens. The kids wake up sick and it throws your entire, entire schedule off, right? Throws off your entire day. Or you get up and you've got to run out because something happened at work and you've got to get to work early. Friend, consistency is not about um, fitting into this particular mold. That's what I'm trying to say, right? I had to think about that for a minute. Consistency isn't about let, you know fitting God into this mold. Consistency in prayer is about communicating with God all throughout the day. Did you catch that, my friend? Prayer is not about a specific time of day. It's not about only at night when you pour yourself into bed exhausted, you start your prayers and then you fall asleep halfway through. Prayer isn't about only early morning prayers locked away in your war room, right? Those are great things. A war room and a prayer closet and all of those are great things. They help to enhance um, the ability to focus. They help you with that ability to focus. But the thing is, it it is not just a one-time thing during the day. And it is not just a, oh, I've got to do it every single day. And then when you fall off the wagon and life gets crazy and busy, you think, ah, forget it. I can never get consistent with my prayers. Friend, no. Consistency in prayers. Now here, I want to tell you something real quick. I don't believe we should live our lives and try to fit God into it, except that, yeah, I kind of do. Obviously, we've talked about um, our, uh, um, excuse me, pri- the priorities of God. Absolutely, positively, we talk all the time about seeking God, seeking his kin- kingdom first. And I believe that and I live that with my whole heart. Every single morning I wake up and say, Lord, or I ask, Lord, how can I best serve you today, right? I don't believe we fit God into our lives, but kind of I do because here's what I want you to know. Being consistent in prayer is about communicating with God throughout the day. You can pray while you're folding clothes. You can pray before you, when you go out to jog or or take a walk outside rather than just putting in your earbuds and getting started with a podcast or music right away. Instead of doing that, sit or be quiet while you're walking or jogging or exercising and spend time praying to God, connecting with God. What about on your morning commute? That's a perfect time to do it. And oh, let's talk about, this is something I talk about in Fearless Prayer. Let's talk about doing and oh this is something that i absolutely love so one of our community members she's been on the show before christy mcwilliams love that girl i'll put a link to the show notes in there uh with her episode but one of the things she started doing with the kids on their way to school is carpool prayers so she's sitting in line at school and she's praying and talk about a great way to get the kids into a habit of prayer oh my goodness i just love that that, that just like fills my heart so much. Friends, it doesn't have to look a certain way. Let go of the expectations that you, what you think prayer needs to look like in order to be consistent and just start talking with him throughout the day. Are you going to forget it first? Absolutely you are. Because remember, we've got to build those spiritual reflexes. We've got to create those habits, a habit of prayer. And we do that by being persistent and consistent. So when you forget, it's okay. Stop real quick. Even if you're in the midst of something, you're busy at work and just stop for a second and just set your mind on God and just say, hey God, ah, thank you God that you're here with me right now. I'm feeling very stressful today. I have a lot of anxiety today. Thank you that you're with me, Lord. Let go of the unrealistic expectations you have surrounding consistent prayers and just show up just show up throughout the day think outside the box the times that you can pray with him Ah, good stuff good stuff here's the thing my friend prayer is not checking the box every day it's not about 
starting, maybe starting your morning in prayer to check off that box and then closing that box up and going about your day. That is not creating a consistent prayer life. Sure, you may do it every day to check off that box, but you see, we're not trying, or or, excuse me, we're not trying to just check off the box. We want to create a relationship, to forge a relationship, to to nurture a relationship with God. And by checking off the box, box just to be consistent to say, okay, I did that today. Oop, I love check marks. I, I do it in my day planner all day long. I love check marks. It gives me this little oomph to, you know, to, to um, keep on going, like that little motivation. I get to check off a box today. But prayer should not be just checking off a box. Consistent prayer hap- should be, or excuse me, should be happening. The goal of consistent prayer is a relationship with God. And therefore, you need to stop just checking off the box or have that mentality and instead have the mentality of nurturing a relationship with God. Every time you think to text one of your friends today, instead of doing that, whisper up a quick prayer or before doing that, whisper up a quick quick prayer to God. Connect with him. It's life-changing, my friend. So in Fearless Prayer, we're going to go through a lesson on creating new habits. It's it's a powerful lesson and it's something that you need to understand about habits, right? About building those spiritual reflexes. So I want you to work through that. And again, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you how at the end of this episode, how to grab fearless prayer, but we're going to walk through a lesson of creating habits, something called habit stacking. I won't go into it now because we're going to go into it there and then helping you find different ways to incorporate God, to, to invite God in, not to fit him into our day, but to invite him into our day. Okay, so I'm going to help walk you through that. Okay, so we've talked about two um, expectations so far. We've talked about how to pray, you know, what it should look like, what we think it should look like, and we talked about consistent prayer. Number three is distractions. Oh my goodness, we all get distracted in our time with God. Always. Like everybody does, my friend. Everyone does. So I want you to understand this is totally normal. We live in a very busy, very chaotic world. For me personally, I love working so much. My brain is always going. Even when I'm not working, my brain is always going on how I can, what I can do to help you walk this out. You know, my mission of helping you learn how to take God's word and apply it to your life. And so, you know, my brain is always going. I know yours is too. I've talked to you. I've talked to people in the Grow Your Faith or these women in the Grow Your Faith community and just you know, hearing these same things, we, we are busy. Life is chaotic. And so there are all these distractions that happen. And so we first have to let go of the expectation that when we're t- spending time with God, or if we were a good Christian, quote unquote, that we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't get distracted in our time with him. Oh my word, friends, that is a flat on lie. That is right from the enemy. That is an expectation that we need to let go of because it's not true. In Fearless Prayer, I'm going to help walk you through that. And then I'm going to offer some steps and solutions to help you break uh, break free of distractions. Now, here's the thing, my friend. And when I say break free, that's not fair because we won't totally break free of distractions. And in fact, there are going to be some days where it's worse than others. When we're going through a busy season in our life, it's going to be worse than others. And so again, you know I'm already going to say it. We have to be persistent in our pursuit of God. So when we get distracted, just in that story that I shared with you about one of our Grow Your Faith community members earlier, just in that story, like in that story, right? She was thinking she could spend 30 minutes with God distraction free. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It's so rare. But you know what we can do is as we practice more, as we practice more and more and more, that focus time will get stronger and stronger. We're building, right? We're pumping that spiritual iron. We're building those spiritual reflexes, my friend. And so each time that focus will get longer and longer. However, 
in busy se seasons, you can darn sure bet it's going to come back again. Like you're, those distractions are going to keep coming and coming and coming. And I'm going to um, actually share one powerful secret with you when it comes to that. Um, in We talk about it in Fearless Prayer, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you now because I think it is so important. I want you, before um, you sit down, right? Before you sit down in your time with God, if you're sitting somewhere, if you're driving somewhere, you can't do it and that's okay. Just when you catch that you've kind of gone off, right? That squirrel moment, stop yourself, set your mind back on God. But if you're at home when this is happening, when you sit down to do Bible study, when you sit down to seek God, to pray with God, here's what I want you to do. Now, this is this is really big, my friend. Mm -hmm. A trusty post-it note. For those of you on YouTube, you see, I'm holding up my pad of post-it notes. Every time that I'm at home and I sit down to seek time with God, I grab a post-it note. And then what happens is when I get distracted, I write it down. As a matter of fact, I'll show you. Just the other day, right? Here's my post-it note. I started to get distracted. And for those of you on YouTube, you can see me. I wrote down, look at all these distractions that I had in my time with God. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine distractions in my time with God the other day. And so what you do is when you get distracted, when, if you're at home, you write it down, write down what it was. Like if you, mine is always my to-do list, right? Write it down and then you can go right back to it. You can get right back to spending that time with God, to praying, to getting into the word. Because then what happens is you write that down. And so it gets out of your head and you can go right back to what you're focusing on, you know, God, right? Um, but you don't forget. Because I don't know about you, but me, I'm very forgetful. So I don't forget. I just go back to that. It's a powerful way, the cheapest, powerful way, most powerful way to not um, completely stop those, those uh, distractions because that's not going to happen. But it's a great way to combat them. It's a great way to get it out of your head and get right back to the task at hand. I love that. Absolutely love that. So my friend, you have to let go of the expectation that when you're spending time with God, you won't have dist distractions, excuse me, because that couldn't be further from the truth. You will get distracted. So let that go. And we're going to just work on being persistent and the more persistent we are, the more we're going to see that focus grow, right? Lengthen, strengthen, and then, um, and then um, we will handle it with things like post-it notes, right? So I'm going to walk you through that in fearless prayer. Really, really talking about those expectations when it comes to um, our prayer walk. Again, how to pray, consistency in prayer, and distractions, right? We're learning how to walk before we can run, my friend. I'm gonna get you running. I will get you there. In fact, right now, as you're listening to this, I am in, like, in deep, I, I hate to say in the weeds, because that sounds negative. Not in the weeds, I am, I am like, head first, I am completely working on helping you run, right? I'm gonna have a whole course on prayer to teach you how to do that, all those other things. But before we can do that, we have to let go of these unrealistic expectations that we have surrounding prayer. Because my friend, all they're doing, what have we talked about throughout this? They're self-focused and they're not, and they're not God-focused, right? We are striving for perfection in a world where we will fall short every single time. We have Satan in our ear constantly, right? constantly he is in our ear. We have distractions and hard times and all the mess of this world. And so we've got to let go of these unrealistic expectations because all we're going to do is fall short. We will never meet these expectations 100%. We just won't. So let them go, my friend, and just show up just as you are. Invite God in throughout your day. And when the distractions come, be more persistent. Is it easy? Nope, it's not. But I tell you, a relationship is with God, a relationship with God is always, oh my gosh, it's incredible. And this is the way 
you start that relationship with prayer. Letting go of all the expectations that you've got to be someone, you've got to wait till you are, are you know, healed and whole to show up for God. That you've got to wait until you're worthy enough to show up for God. My friend, you will never, ever be worthy enough. I will never, ever be worthy enough. And yet, and yet God loves us anyway. And all he wants is a relationship with you just the way you are. So friend, as we start to wrap up, I just want to uh, just kind of reiterate everything. So you've probably seen a pattern throughout this series, this three-part series. That pattern is that in order to have a relationship with God, in order to strengthen your prayer, or excuse me, your faith walk, you have to be persistent and consistent in your pursuit of God. I want to say that again and again and again because I want you getting it in your head and I want you to understand that all these expectations are unrealistic They're not expectations that God has for you. So let them go and be persistent and consistent in your pursuit of God. You will feel vulnerable, my friend. This is going to feel uncomfortable. Do it anyway, because the more you practice, the easier it'll become. You have a busy life and there's a lot going on. There's a lot you have to do each and every day. So start inviting God into each of those areas of your day, right? We don't cram God into all the stuff we have or try to fit him in around all the stuff. We invite him into everything that we're doing throughout the day. And in fearless prayer, I'm going to show you how to habit stack, how to create a more consistent prayer life, how to create those, those, um, habits, right? Build those spiritual reflexes so that things start to become automatic for you. So that every time you sit down to fold clothes, you're going to automatically think of prayers. So that when you walk out on the front porch, which I share in uh, Fearless Prayer, automatically your brain will start to go to, oh, this is my prayer time. When I jump in the car to head to work on Monday mornings, I know, like I don't turn the music on, I don't turn a podcast on because I know that is my prayer time first and foremost. So I'm going to teach you how to have it stack. I want you to think outside the box, my friend, and start creating this, um, creating the these habits by habit stacking. And again, I'll explain habit stacking in fearless prayer. I'll go into that with you and walk you through it. So friend, remember, you've got to learn how to walk. We've got to learn how to let go, release these unrealistic expectations so we can walk closer to God. And so I want you to be persistent, right? I want you to be persistent and consistent. And I'm going to help you. I've been telling you about fearless prayer. I am so excited to get this into your hands. Like I said, I have been testing this. I have been working with community members, uh, Footprints of Inspiration community members, and really getting feedback on this and really, really helping you um, so I can teach you how to walk before you can learn how to run, before we get into the deeper things in our faith, right? And then in our prayer journey to become confident prayer warriors, right? We've got to learn first how to be fearless in our prayers. So fearless prayer is seven days to overcoming doubt and distractions to create a consistent prayer life. And here's how you can get it. Hop on over to footprintsofinspiration.com slash fearless prayer. That's footprintsofinspiration.com slash fearless prayer. Go do that. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. So if you're out running around and don't have time right now to do it, um, don't worry about it. I, that's, I will put this in the show notes so that you can get it. We want to make sure you're getting your hands on this for sure. So again, it's footprintsofinspiration.com slash fearless prayer. Friend, it has been my honor to walk through this three-part series with you. It is my mission to really, really get this into the hands of of as many women as possible to not just teach you, because, because here's the thing, we're not taught how to pray or most of us have not been taught how to pray. And we deal with these unrealistic expectation when it comes to, to our faith walk and it's hindering us. It is completely hindering us from from living out the life God wants for us, that God has for us. Until we let go of these these unrealistic expectations and just start showing up perfectly and perfect, we cannot be fully used for God in his kingdom. We will not experience fulfillment. We cannot experience peace in in the midst of the pain 
until we let go of these unrealistic expectations of what, what it should look like. So fearless prayer is not like, it, it, it's unlike, excuse me, any study you've done before. This is a seven day study. That's it. Seven days. It is unlike any study you've done before because we're going to get to the root of those unrealistic expectations. We're going to combat them with God's truth and we're going to be persistent and consistent. We're going to think outside the box and how on, 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 on our prayers, right? We're not going to, we're going to take that box. We're going to blow the lid off of it and stop putting what prayers look, should look like in a little box. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to think outside the box and start inviting God into other areas of our days, right? We're going to beat those distractions, my friend, because in order to learn how to be specific in your prayers and Lord, in order to become a confident prayer warrior, we first have to learn how to let go of these other, these unrealistic expectations. So friend, Again, it's truly been an honor. It would mean the world to me if you would share this with a friend so we can get this out um, to as many women as possible. That is my mission is to really, really make a difference and really teach you, take you by the hand and take as many women by the hand as possible and walk through this, walk through this with them so that, um, so that you, so that they can really start to just explode in, um, what am I trying to say? I just, I just think of this, like this, this filling of the heart and this explosion of just all that we are capable of when we let go of these unrealistic expectations and just show up perfectly and perfect, just the way we are. So friend, I'm going to meet you back here again. Thank you so much for joining me for this three-part series. I'm going to meet you back here next week with another episode of a Faithful God podcast. 